The dude is not ready. There were clods, and those clods were not dirt. You are so nasty. Oh my god. <laughs> I got you now. And that's where you're going to live for the next two weeks. First time I called me down to his office. The stories I have collected and been a part of over the last few decades, you can't make these things up. So I want to, to share some stories with you. Uh, in, the, in this particular one, it's going to be a story. And I'd like to know what you would have done down in the comments below. How would you have handled it? How would you think this would be handled today? None of the names are the same and all that kind of good stuff so we come out from the field and this warfighter failed his inspection uh post recovery and all all of his gear was just a, a complete hot mess and so i gave this warfighter uh th this leader gave this warfighter <laughs> about a uh, about like two pay periods to get right I was feeling a little gracious and wanted to give uh, this young trooper a, a, enough time and enough in his bank account to be able to uh, demonstrate accountability of all his property and to make sure it was all serviceable, clean, and all that stuff. And But because there was a failure, uh, this leader told the, the war, that, young, that young trooper uh, that he was going to be in his service uniform. He was going to be in his alphas. And that day came for the follow-up inspection. And so there I was. I, I can't even hide that anymore. Right? Cat's out of the bag. There I was uh, getting into my own service uniform. Because if you're going to inspect somebody in a uniform, I believe you should be in that uniform. Standing up on a chair and putting my, my trousers on. That way you don't get little ghost turds on, on the bottom of them. And I, I head down. I had an extra. The barracks had an external catwalk. And I'm walking down the, the catwalk. It was a it was a horseshoe-shaped barracks. Uh, three stories. And we're up on, on the second floor. And I'm walking down. And, and I see that the door's open. And I barge in. And the dude is not ready. The dude is not ready. He's not ready. His his bunk is not laid out. All of his junk's not on there. His wall locker is not prepared. And he's sitting over against the wall ironing his shirt that he's supposed to have on right now. So as you can imagine, I uh, kind of lost my mind and kind of turned into a, a little Tasmanian devil, if you will. And I start rummaging through everything that's on the bunk, and, and some of it's clean and serviceable, some of it's dirty, nasty. And I was like, where's the rest of your stuff? And he's like, well, it's in the wall locker. So I go to the wall locker, and the trooper had two wall lockers, and uh, open up the one, and it's all of his uniforms that are all hodgepodge together, not dress right dress, not according to our unit SOP. I went so that's obviously not where his deuce gear is. I go to the other wall locker and I open it up and, and deuce gear starts to fall out. I'm like, oh, oh my god! I really start to ramp it up now. I'm at about a six, and I take his pack and and I turn it upside down and I empty it out and all of his crap comes falling out. And I take a shelter hat pole. Shelter hat pole, by the way, is a piece of the shelter system that we used to get issued and so now i'm already dating this story to 1990 something bc is before cell phones and i take this shelter half pin everybody had a shelter half and you had three three poles you had like five stakes and, and a rope and then your battle buddy had the rest of it right so you, you got to sleep with your battle buddy you didn't have no individual tents there wasn't even an individual room uh, but he was lucky because it was only a two-man room, and oh, if I could have had a two-man room. So I take this shelter half pole, and I start picking up the stuff and shaking it about and throwing it all over the place until this one article of clothing is left. And I take this shelter half pole, and I stick it down in there, and I start waving this thing around in this dude's face. If you can imagine 
what was on the end of that pole was none other than a pair of dirty skivvy drawers. Now, not only were they dirty skivvies, they were clumpy. There were remnants. There were clods, and those clods were not dirt. And at this point in time, I completely lost my mind, ramped it up to about an eight, and I had had enough. I was like, dude, you are so nasty. You are not going to sleep in this room anymore. Your rent has not been paid, and you are being evicted. So I start taking all this stuff, and I start throwing out into the middle of the horseshoe barracks, right, over the second floor catwalk, down into the little common area down there, the little barbecue pit, all of his stuff, his, his service uniforms, his utility uniforms, all of his deuce gear, all of his stuff that was in the room is now outside. And I'm just, I'm just a whirlwind. And then I stop. And I look up, and I can see that there's a ceiling tile. I don't know why I caught my eye, but there's a ceiling tile, right? Acoustical ceiling tile that's kicked out of place just a little bit. Ha! Huh. Imagine that. So I go and I take that ironing board, and I scuff it over a little bit, and I climb up on it. I was a little bit, a little bit lighter back then. And I push up on the ceiling tile and lo and behold there is a trash bag so i take this trash bag down out of the steel now what do you think was in this trash bag of course it was all of his uh tobacco products right his spit containers because he was too stinking nasty and lazy and there was alcohol bottles Woo! come on now you already know and can figure out that this young trooper was not 21 years old. He was 18, 19 years old. He was underage drinking in the barracks. <laughs> I got you now, you dirty son of a gun. Your butt is mine. I said, I'll tell you what. what's going to happen. They're PFC. You're going to take your shelter half. You're not even going to get your battle buddy shelter half. And you're going to go out to the woods and you're going to set that thing up. And that's where you're going to live for the next two weeks. Two weeks! You're going to live out there until you can figure out how you're going to start paying your rent to come back into these barracks. About that time, one of my battle buddies came down and uh, heard all the commotion. Because you know that's what NCOs do, right? When an NCO is out there getting in the tail... And getting in that butt and, and tearing it up. Your battle buddies, your fellow team leaders, they come down and you start to mass together. Only this time he wasn't participating and joining in. He called me outside and he said, hey, brother, you may want to calm it down a little bit. You see all the platoon sergeants, they were throwing a, a farewell party. Farewell party for one of the other senior NCOs. And they're down there in that common area in the barbecue pit having a few brewskis, cooking up some meat, and having a show. It's like the opposite of 4th of July because instead of everything going up, everything was going down. He's like, you may want to calm it down. It's like, Arr. fine. Appreciate you, battle. So I turned back to this little dirty trooper. I said, you have your purpose you have your direction, and you have your motivation. I dare you not to meet the standard on this one. I dare you. And I left. And, of course, the next morning, the first sergeant called me down to his office and said, what the hell did I hear about what was going on here in my barracks? And I told him the story, and... When I got to the part of the of the drawers, that's that's when that's when he completely lost it. It's like get the hell out of my office. <laughs> I didn't tell him about the booze. Um, and so you know, a couple of weeks later, you know, the dude moved back in. But what what I I come to find out later was that when I moved that ironing board, remember there was because there was an iron on the ironing board. When I moved that ironing board, that iron fell down onto the brand new carpets that that same senior leader who was retiring had uh, procured for all the rooms in the barracks and burned a hole completely through it. 
And this young, this young trooper, and this is, I gave him a lot of props for this, not to his face uh, anyways, I don't think, uh, but certainly in my own mind and how I continue to, to respond to try to develop this young motivator. Uh, I had turned the carpet so that that burn hole was sitting underneath a wall locker so that the gunny would never find it. Pretty amazing. So there you have a story of a dirty, nasty warfighter who could not take care of his gear. So a couple scenario questions, right? Would Do you properly conduct recovery ops? You, your unit probably has a five to seven day window. When you have folks who don't meet the standard, what do you do? Do you let it slide? Or do you go back and reinspect? If you continue to find non-conforming conditions, such as this, underage drinking, dirty drawers, how would you have responded? Odds are you're probably not going to respond you know, quite like I did. And I don't know that I would respond in the exact same way. I may have kept some of the uh, party words out of my mouth. I may, uh, may or may not have kicked the dude out into the wood tree line. <laughs> I probably would have kicked him out of the tree line today. Um, but there's a lot to lot, a lot of fat to chew on there. So I'm looking forward to your thoughts and your comments down there. Because you know what, man? These types of stories, they happen each and every single day throughout at least two of the branches, right? At least throughout the Army and the Marine Corps. Where you have dudes who are out there who are not meeting the standard. And they may not warrant or justify, in your opinion, you know, some form of non-judicial punishment. But you have to take some kind of corrective action. So what corrective action would you have taken with this young motivator if he was in your charge today? I got a lot more stories. I got books of them. I've been writing all these things down. So we'll keep this conversation rolling. And as always, until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stupid.